Moving on to this next article so we can get through the news is the Mr. Saturn implementation. Mr. Tell me about it. Mr. Saturn, Mr. Saturn. So uh, uh, so I think we reported on in the past, but uh, uh, Sergi Divin... I think it's Sorleg. I think that's also his name, Sorleg. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know because I'm not good with these names and they use like different names. It's it's like S S L G or something on YouTube. But uh but yeah, uh like we reported, um he continued his work on the Saturday implementation the the Saturday FPG, FPGA implementation for Mr. So for these of you that don't know, Mr. is a uh it's basically a FPGA platform for retro games so it, it basically i guess the closest thing i can describe it is it's like the it's like the mega the mega sg the super nt mm -hmm. uh basically all those cores super nintendo and just put on a little thing that you just put a flash card on mm -hmm. you can play a bunch of games in the library and uh, they're working on a saturn implementation it's all going to be hardware implementation so it's all mm -hmm. going to be like uh like to the hardware level so it's implement implement Implementing the chips and all the circuitry and stuff in this in the system itself. Essentially, so it's like having a recreation. Right now, it's it's gone pretty intense. Where it, it went from just a basic boot system, just going to the the checking the checking the disk and the uh, the BIOS, to launching like little projects, to even booting games. Like they they have here in the last video. I can't control uh, Dave's thing, but uh, it has them uh, actually booting into uh, Earthworm Jim, and it's glitchy as hell. It looks awful, plain, just disgusting, but, like, I mean, it's impressive because this is, like, the closest we've had in a long time, and uh, Mr., uh, I guess, um, that's what I think, Mr., Mr., Mr. Philosophers, or, like, uh, I guess, estimators of how far this project can go, says that maybe the best we could do is probably PS1, uh, but apparently this one's going pretty well. Like, uh, uh, Sergi S SRG320 basically said, uh, that right now they writ uh, written, r have written 95% of the SH2, 90% of SCU, uh, the VDP1 and 2 is 80, 90% respectively, the SMPC is 80%, SCSP is 70%, and the CD uh, module is 85%. So those are pretty high numbers, and as you can see, or I guess when he gets the video back up, uh, you just click on it and they'll be able to they'll be able to boot the games and we're getting pretty close to like a actual implementation and the mr progress has been insane over the years it went from you know a couple cores to like we're getting like the cps1 we're getting cps2 getting the neo geo i i don't know the progress sadly on the uh on the the uh x68000 hopefully they do that soon i really like that console a lot but uh, yeah, and you know, while we can't really see what a 100% Saturn core will look like right now, or if it's even possible, because like I said, we don't know the limits of the Mister. There might be something that uh, would prevent us from being 100%. But uh, you know, knowing Sergi, I mean, it's possible that that we can get that because he's been making the impossible possible. So I believe in him. I think we're gonna get some really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, if you keep following us, uh, we'll keep uh, keep on the lookout. We'll make sure that uh, we'll keep you in the lookout look out for the FPG implementations. And if you want to follow uh, his progress, you can go on patreon.com slash SRG320 and you can follow him and support him on Patreon. Uh, yeah, like I would definitely would, would have to say that if, if you do support him, I would not mind if it's over us because he's really putting together some really great stuff. And as you can see, I mean, it's, progressing pretty fast and i think once we get that full implementation it's going to be insane what we come up with like i think the people in the chat are saying like saturn mini i mean technically yeah it's a mini saturn like even hardware implementation wise it's uh, implementation of that the saturn is probably like the last console i would ever want to have to do a reverse engineering project on for the hardware uh, yeah, because okay. isn't there like some modules that aren't even even known yet or like backtraced at all? I mean, uh, I, I know that currently in Homebrew, uh, we do not have a good way of doing sound. Uh, I think uh, like there's two sound chips and I think one of them we don't even have a, a, a good map for. Uh, I'm probably I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sure Knight knows better than me, but uh, essentially uh, Ponut has given us a 68 k uh driver and then the other part of the sound chip i don't know if we know how to control it yet but that's mostly a library thing yeah uh, and the cool thing is that they actually have 68,000 implemented implemented open source 
So a lot of these things, they just, like, drag into the project and just add it on. I know it sounds silly. It's like soldering a chip in, but uh, it makes you wonder if they're going to do some decapping on some of these things and try to and try to implement it that way, I which think I think would be... A, huh? They might have to. Like, uh, th some of this is custom hardware, and I think... Uh... That's like the only reliable way to actually get to figure out what's going on here. It's like just the documentation for VDB2 itself is just silly in terms of like the stuff you have to, to figure out um, and how it, it doesn't even guarantee consistent results. It specifically warns you not to expect that. So to replicate that kind of chaotic hardware situation, uh, I don't know what that even involves. Hmm. I mean, I think I think a lot of the stuff they're taking from like the emulation of it too, because a lot of people, while they do do de do chip decap uh, chip uh, decaps and like tracing everything, mm -hmm. a lot of them do the em emulation route and just like uh, like try to assume what the chips do and sort of match the output of it. Right. Like so there's definitely different ways basically. to implement it. So, so yeah. one route you could take is like just saying, okay, if every game in the library, every official game. Uh, plays the way it plays on console that is good enough that as a faithful representation but you know as a homebrew dev if something works on a console one way but works on this thing a different way i'm not saying it's likely but uh you know it would be annoying for me but yeah nobody cares about me anyway so it doesn't matter <laughs> We all love you here, Emerald. But anyway, best friend. sorry guys, what, what I was saying before I got uh, torn away by the kiddos is that uh, basically Mr. is set to uh, displace the whole RetroPie market because like for uh, a decade now we've had like these underpowered little pie consoles, you know, that do all your emulation and I mean, you know, they're... It's a lot of people use them. I'm not, you know, bagging on them or anything like that. You can get some actually pretty good emulation out of like the retro Pi, uh, out of the Pi Three, you know, and uh, the I'm not sure about the Pi Zero, but like some of the late, some of the more recent uh, Raspberry Pis can do a pretty good job. But I mean, again, this is the same kind of idea: a little box that's going to be able to support all of your retro consoles, but it's going to do it like Pat said with actual cores, you know, FPGA cores of those consoles. So it's going to be as accurate as it possibly can be. And more importantly, yeah. it solves the uh, it solves the problem of you know scarcity. Uh, you know, because otherwise we don't really have a way of, of making remaking most of these consoles. Mm -hmm. We can remake an NES, we can make a Super Nintendo, we can make a, a Genesis, mm -hmm. but I don't think we can remake a Saturn. Right, yeah, I mean, agreed, and I, and I don't think anybody's going to try, you know, it, like as far as like real hardware goes. Um, that said, you know, like I do want folks to know that I think emulation has been vital to the preservation of video games, and I mean, I think the main project is is awesome they were tr basically trying to do the same thing they just didn't have uh, uh availability and access to these like cheap fpgas you know now that the technology has uh gotten to the point where it's come down in price and you're able to get your hands on a lot of these fpgas for a uh, reasonable enough price uh to make these you know it's really becoming a reality but still i think that there's a place for emulation in terms of just what it brings to the table uh for game preservation uh, and I mean, you know, yeah. I think companies like M2 do a great job with it, you know? Yeah, and I want to answer a couple questions in the chat. So, Jamator Gaming asked, how much does a Mr. Cost? Uh, right now, the DE10 Nano is kind of expensive because it's been affected by the chip shortage. Uh, I bought mine for 130 back in 19, or was it 18? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Uh, it was 18. It was before I left my house. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, nowadays, I'm looking on Amazon, it's about 175 for the base, and I think the kit's going to be a little bit more expensive, like for the SD RAM and the CRT module, it's like, it's probably going to be around, probably around the $250, $300 mark, but uh, right. I'm hoping with the part shortage ending, it'll be cheaper. There's some pre-set pre, pre uh, like pre -set up ones you can buy on, like, MrAddons.com, mm -hmm. and uh it, while it is, does seem kind of expensive, if you think about it, a, an, uh, a, uh, a Super NT and a... Uh, and a and a Mega SG would be costing about five hundred dollars for both of those together. So you're already saving two hundred dollars, and you get all these consoles in one if you just want to play like the flashcards and stuff. So, yeah. so how, um, how many consoles would you say are feature complete at this moment? Off the top of my head, I would say more, probably more, more than thirty, less than than sixty. Yeah. Thirty. A lot. Uh, well, 
Wait, do you count do you count arcade boards too? Because the arcade boards is probably no, like, gonna add another like fifty. Well, you 40, got 50 on you top got of NES, Super NES, Genesis, TG sixteen, or or uh, you know uh, PC Engine, PC Engine. You got Neo Geo Perfect. What else? Um, PC eighty eight, PS one. It's got some computers, right? MSX, MSX, PC eighty eight. I don't think so. I have to double check. Okay. That's a, that's a work in progress. Um, uh, Atari 800, 1600, uh, 5200. Um, Master System, we didn't mention, but it's got it. Uh, yeah, Master System, yeah, Genesis and stuff. Like, like all Sega the CD. ones most people would it's want. The first two PlayStations, right? Hmm? PlayStation isn't the first two PlayStations? No. No, not PlayStation yet. No, not yet. Uh, I mean, it's, in, it's a work then, in progress. And then all the arcade boards like Neo Geo, CPS One, CPS Two. Actually, CPS Two mm -hmm. is in progress, but it's pretty much done at this point. N sixty four. Nope. 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 Uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, I think some of the Dig, Dig Dug got a board. Uh, there's just so many, so many things. You, there's a huge list of them on the website, but yeah. like I said, it's it's more than thirty. I think probably no less than sixty or eighty if you count all the arcade boards. Yeah, as it gets into as they. As they get into the mid '90s and the fifth generation of consoles, you had all of these like unique processors. Uh, each company kind of went their own way with these unique processors, but everything before that, uh, even arcade boards and stuff like that, had a lot in common with using like the Motorola 36, uh, 6800. 30, or 68K. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, I think that even like with with uh, a lot of the work that had been done with Mame. Uh, they got a lot, they were able to start off by getting a lot of information from that project and d doing the reverse engineering thing you were talking about pat uh and then of course you had a few folks who were actually able to like take the take the top off the chips and and look at them under a microscope and stuff but i mean for the most part uh that similar that that having that in common with a lot of those uh motorola chips uh, um, made it easy to get everything like pre 32 bit uh perfect but that's that's where these new projects are really facing a challenge is just like with this unique hardware like the sh2s or the or the rsp what what's the one in the playstation the gte or whatever uh i don't know to be honest with you yeah i don't know really but like yeah well, we're saturn people the, we silicon, the, 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 the nintendo here. the nintendo and their silicon graphics chip you know uh they're very proprietary stuff that has to be looked at uh, that has nothing in yeah. common really with the other with the other systems, so it's not like you can use a lot of that information across platforms. Yeah, and uh, somebody also asked if the, if the Mister can soak up to a CRT, and yes, it can. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a CR, there's a um, I think it's exp I forgot the name of it. It's like a VGA expansion port or something, but it outputs RGBS. I think it outputs a it outputs a VGA and a component. So I actually have it hooked up to my arcade monitor right now. Mm -hmm. So and that's what I use in my for my CPS stuff and my Neo Geo stuff in my arcade machine. So yeah, that's what I think that's the best thing about it is that we can get all that stuff and uh, you don't have to worry about getting RGB mods, recapping stuff. Just set it and forget it and it's pretty much one to one. Mm-hmm.